How do you make a PEV video with a live speedometer, battery stats, and audio that doesn't suck? This video will show you how. Here's a sneak peek at what we're going to make during this video. Notice the live speedometer in the bottom middle and the battery in the top right. Let's talk about the gear. I'm recording with a Rode Wireless Pro with the windscreen attached. I'm only taking the transmitter and I'm recording internally. My jacket has this convenient pocket, so I place it here. The camera I use is the Insta360 X3. I record in the 5.7K 30 frame per second mode. I use this extra long aluminum selfie stick to reduce the fisheye distortion in the edit. I use these two 500 gram counterweights to move the balance point back and make the camera less heavy to hold. The speedometer is recorded on the phone. Open display and brightness settings. But before you start recording, make sure you set auto lock to never. If you forget when the screen locks, your recording will stop. Pull down from the top right to access control center. Hold your finger on the screen recording button and tap the option that says microphone on before you start recording. You'll need the audio track so that you can synchronize all these sources and posts. So that's three sources recording, the phone, the microphone, and the 360 camera. To make it easier in the edit, I record all three continuously. I import them all into the computer and keep them in the same folder. I'm opening the 360 files to prepare them for use in Final Cut Pro. Because I'm lazy, I'll use the deep track feature to keep the camera centered on me. I'll hit the mute button because I don't want to listen to it happen and I'll click and we'll just wait. The deep track is finished and I want to finesse this a little bit. I'll click on the yellow line and I'll work with the FOV. We'll drag this to make this a little wider and I do that just so I have plenty of room to put the speedometer under the one wheel. Now we just need to export. I'll click the yellow button and I made the resolution 3840 wide so that it fits in a 4K timeline and Final Cut. This all looks good. Let's start. Now we have all the pieces we need for Final Cut. Let's learn how to put them all together. Let's make a new project. We'll make it 4K and I'll call it speedometer. And we'll import our clips. I'll just drag them on in. And with the clip selected, we'll right click and create a new multicam clip with the same properties as the project. So I'll choose 4K here as well. And we'll go 2997, call it speedometer MC for multicam. And this use audio for synchronization. Let's give this a try and okay. So Final Cut's going to try to use the audio from the three clips to synchronize everything. It does not always work. So I would encourage you when you're recording to make sure you get a good clap sync in to create an audio spike so that all of your angles have something that you could manually line up to if necessary. It'll also help Final Cut with its automatic synchronization step. But let's just wait for this and when it's finished, we'll see what we get. Final Cut generated the multicam clip and let's double click to see what's inside. Here it shows the microphone angle, the iPhone screen recording and the 360 camera angle all kind of shifted so that they're lined up based on the audio synchronizing. And that will allow for the speed to show in real time in our actual edit. Now these next steps can get confusing, so just bear with me. I'm going to move my playhead to the start of the 360 clip, and I'm going to blade everything just so that everything starts at the same time in my multicam clip. So if you don't know where your blade all command is, you can go into help and type blade and then choose blade all. I set my keyboard shortcut to option B. And so I'm going to the back and I'll do the same thing, option B. And you'll see that made this perforation on the clips. I'm actually just gonna grab the front end of these and hit delete. And I'll do the same for the back end. I'm going to take my 360 clip and turn it into a compound clip. This is just gonna make it a lot easier to always have the speed and the battery life showing. I'll right click on the 360 clip and choose new compound clip. And I'll just call this CP for compound. Now I'll copy the iPhone screen recording angle and I'll double click to go inside the compound clip and I'll paste 
the iPhone screen recording above the 360 angle. Now, for the speedometer, we need to mask out the speed part only. And to do that, I'll use Final Cut's Draw Mask tool. So I'll click on Effects and I'll search for the effect called Draw Mask. And I'll select the iPhone clip and double click Draw Mask. It's telling me click to add a control point in the viewer. So let me go ahead and do that. And I don't have to be super precise with my mask. I'll just click a few more times here and make sure I cover around the speedometer. That looks good. To clean this up, I'll change the compositing blend mode from normal to lighten. And what that's telling Final Cut to do is look at the pixels in the iPhone screen recording. And if they're brighter than what's underneath it, show those pixels. Now, right now I have an issue. I'm gonna drag this down so you can see it a little better. I have an issue to where I'm still seeing the background of the app. So I want to make the background of the app darker. And then I want to ensure that the pixels for the circle and the speedometer are brighter. And to accomplish that, I'll want to add a color adjustment. You're doing great. Keep going. In this effects panel, I can type in color adjust and I'll give this a little more room so you can see what it looks like. Let me add that to the clip by double clicking. And if I go into this color adjustment section, I want my black point to move over so that that darkest point in the app background becomes darker than the underlying clip. So I'll drag that to the left and it looks like going to 100 was perfect. And I wanna ensure that the speedometer circle is brighter than anything underneath. And so I can work with highlights and pump that. So I'm dragging that to the right and I see I'm getting a sharper circle there. And my last two steps here then are I need to position this where I want it. To help with that, I'll click view and I'll do show horizon. And then now I'll use the on-screen control by clicking here and I'll drag the speedometer under the wheel and I'll line up the vertical spike for the speedometer with that part of the horizon. And I actually probably should have scaled this down first because watch what happens when I scale it down. Kind of scales from the center. So I need to reposition it again. I think let's go a little bit bigger than that. Let's go to this size and then I'll scoot it over and I'll scoot it up. And that looks great to me. So let's play it and see. Okay. So I see it still needs to be a little brighter so that when my light on my board is showing in this area, it doesn't totally obscure the side. So I'll go back to color adjustments and I'll keep playing with it. So let's uh, increase the brightness. Now I have that blue, that's good. I can bring overall exposure up. Let's move shadows up a little bit. There we go, now we see that gray showing. It looks pretty good. Nice. All right, I'm gonna turn horizon off. Now, if I want the battery percentage, I'm basically repeating the same steps, but I'm putting the draw mask over the battery. So I'll take the same clip, hold option, drag it straight up. And let's go ahead and go back to my video inspector, delete the current draw mask, and then I'll add a new one. Okay. I added the new draw mask, but right now my uh, transform on screen control is competing with it. So let me click that, to turn that one off. And now we have what we need. And I can actually go outside of this boundary here. So let's go I'm gonna zoom in to make life easier. Click here, make sure I get under that S series sign. So I'll click there. Make sure I get above the settings icon. So that looks good. Perfect. So. I have a solid mask for just the battery, and now we just need to position it where we want it in the frame. I think uh, first thing that I'll do again, I'll scale it down. Let's go with uh, 65, looks good. And we'll bring back the on-screen control, and we'll position that somewhere in the upper right. Kind of looks like a video game there. For this, on a bright sunny day, you might need the brighter color adjustment, but I want to back it down a little bit because I need some better contrast between the color and the numbers here. So let's uh, bring contrast down, brightness down. 
That looks like it's gonna be fine. Let's just play it back. Okay, finally, I'm just gonna turn off the audio on all of these tracks because in the multicam clip that we're editing, we won't use audio from the 360 camera or these iPhone screen recording clips. And I set a shortcut for this, but uh, if you don't have it, click help and type silence. And then I set mine to just hitting the zero key, but if I give this a click, that'll turn the volume all the way down for these. I'll arrow back and now everything's nice and neat in the multicam clip. I'm actually going to turn off audio here also. Okay. We're in the home stretch. I'll add the multicam clip into the timeline. And as a final step, I'll go to window workspaces, multicam. Let's do shift Z so that everything fits in the viewer. And I see my clip starts around here. Cool. I'm going to trim the left side of that. And the problem we're seeing now is it's showing the iPhone screen recording clip instead of our 360 clip. We can fix that nice and easy. First, we click on the video icon here, and that is going to ensure that when we change this to the 360 angle, that it doesn't change our audio source. Our audio is set to our microphone, which we want. So we'll give this a click. All right, good. And it looks like my viewer is zoomed in too much. So instead of 50% here, I'll click and I'll hit fit. Let's play it back. Nobody's recording. And everything looks great here. We have the audio set to the microphone. We have the screen recording synchronized to the video clips. The battery's in place. The speedometer's in place. Yo, if you made it this far, you are amazing. Give yourself a high five and a pat on the back. You did it. But there is one more thing. After I finished recording that long Final Cut Pro section, I decided artistically I liked the heads up display aesthetic more than just the battery bar. So I used the draw mask tool to include more of the one wheel app. And this was super simple to do. You see inside of the compound clip, we just drew the mask around the items on the app that we wanted to show. You might notice it has this little foot here but I'm cropping that. But if I want to show the region and all that kind of stuff, I can turn that crop on or off. Let's watch it and see how it turned out. My mission for this video was to create a resource that PEV video creators could use. Having these stats on the video makes for a richer experience. And I hope that you'll share it with a video creator that you know. Now get out there and make videos.